I got to try Blind Drive Assist in Forza Motorsport and won my first race. Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and I play video games. To find out how, click here or the link in the description down below. While you're down there, click the like and subscribe buttons so I can make cool videos in the future. All right, well, thanks to Xbox, I got a chance to try out Xboxes and Turn 10's next big release, Forza Motorsport this past weekend, which meant I could fully try the brand new Blind Drive Assist and put it through its paces. Now, full disclosure, this isn't the first time I've tried Blind Drive Assist, as I did provide feedback to Turn 10 about it last year, but shout out to Brandon Cole, the lead accessibility consultant on this feature. Now, we were limited in what we could do in the game as we only had access to one main racing series called the Builder's Cup, which is meant as more of a beginning series of races to kind of get you used to how Forza's racing simulator works. I will say that this is a way different experience than the Horizon series. While the Horizon series is more arcade in its style, Forza Motorsport is definitely a simulator's dream racing game much like its counterpart on PlayStation with Gran Turismo. This game is designed for you to tune your car to your perfect performance style and just get that little extra push you need to get to that pole position as fast as you can. The tracks and cars look gorgeous playing on my Xbox Series X. The detail is astounding and the performance is so smooth. You have the option to choose performance at 60 FPS at 4K or visuals with 4K at 30 frames per second, but with ray tracing, which I went for the, you know, the middle, which is set at performance at 60 frames per second, but with ray tracing turned on. And wow, does the game feel and run great. It Mwah, it's chef's kiss, it's what it is. Regarding what the game has for accessibility, besides the blind drive assist, you can turn on narrator and audio descriptions for all cinematics, subtitles, larger text for all text in the game, and heavy drive assist that help with either steering or braking. There's a great feature that is designed for blind players that I think actually will help most other players as well. And that is you can turn off car to car collisions where while racing in single player races, each car is ghosted so you can drive through them and not have to worry about being bumped off the track. This is super helpful because it takes the stress out of trying to stay on the racing line for me and not worry about bumping into another car. Now granted, yes, this won't work in multiplayer, but it was a huge stress relief in my personal playthrough. For motor disabled players, there are up to 15 different control schemes and including one blank copyable control scheme that you can customize to your full, ex whatever experience you want. You can customize the volume of everything in the game from the sound effects to your car engines, the tires, and the also the other car engines, the crowd, the music, everything else you can control the volume of, which is really awesome. But let's go into what we talked about at the beginning. Let's jump into Blind Drive Assist. So let's talk about it. What is it? Well, Blind Drive Assist is where using audio cues, you can have complete audio control to give players precise information to not only help you drive on a racetrack, but also compete in races. It's the first time we've ever seen this in a racing game before. You have audio cues for when a player needs to deaccelerate and when to go back on the throttle. There's an off-screen coach that tells you what turn is coming up, whether it's a left or a right, a hairpin or a slight turn, and the severity of that turn ranging on a scale from one being the tightest of turns to six being a less severe of a turn. Left two long. Right one is left hairpin long. Left four long. Left five. You can also have two audio cues that will beep when you're about to approach a turn. And then you have another one that will go and tell you when you're going into a turn, when you're at the apex of a turn, and when you're coming out of that turn. Plus, if that's not enough, there's an audio cue that will tell you how close or how far to the edge of the track you are, and the audio will pan left or right in your speakers or headphones to which side you're closest. You can even have all the audio pan left to right to let you know where you need to turn back to to get to the center of the track. <laughs> Thank you. 
Plus, you can adjust the volume and the pitch of all those audio cues to help you distinguish between them all. That is a lot of customization. So before jumping into my first race, I turned literally everything on. I tweaked some of it of what I wanted to try out just to kind of see how it all worked. In my first practice race, I was not good. <laughs> I couldn't make the turns correctly and had difficulty knowing when was best to break. Even with everything turned on, a lot was happening in my headphones. I had difficulty distinguishing which was which, and it was just honestly a cacophony of sound. Left five. Thank goodness for Forge's best known feature, the rewind function. So you can rewind a lousy turn or go off track. When you missed it, you can hit Y on the controller, rewind before that moment and fix your mistake, which helped out a lot in that first race. Now, this isn't a fault of blind drive assist. It was doing exactly what it was supposed to do. But as someone that's more used to an arcade style racer like Forza Horizon, I thought this would be a bit more hands-on in terms of taking control a bit more. But I realized that much like tuning the engine of my 2018 Ford Mustang GT to get the best performance, I would need to do the same thing too with the blind drive assist. So I went into the volume settings and started to tune the volume sliders of both my engine volume and the tire volume so that the volume of the sound effects wasn't drowning out the assist cues so I could hear them a bit better. I also changed the pitch of the turn cue so that I had a lower tone to help separate that audio cue from similar cues. And lastly, I also changed the pitch and the volume of the track limit so I didn't confuse them with the deacceleration cue. Left two and right two. After feeling okay with the tuning and, you know, after practicing on the track and getting some good times in on sections of the track, I jumped into my second race. In the first lap, I went back and forth from 13th to 6th to 14th. I knew I was getting the right amount of acceleration, but my turns were less than perfect, and even slight mistakes like braking too quickly or even just tapping the brakes once could be enough to slow my momentum where cars were passing me. After going into the last hairpin turn and dropping back to 20th, I did start to feel out the track a bit better, and the blind drive assist was starting to work for me instead of working around me. I was able to react faster, not worry about the other cars, and focus on trying to make the perfect turns. I then realized that the blind drive assist wasn't trying to force me to be on rails. It was just giving me information, information I can use, information I can add to my strategy while racing. I can interpret those audio cues and drive how I wanted. If I wanted to throttle into a turn earlier than when the, what the assist was telling me, I could. If I didn't want to follow the racing line, go a bit more into the middle of the track, so when going into a turn, I can full send it while still on the throttle and get the top speed coming out of that turn, I could do that too. As I started to get a better feel for it, I ended the second race in fourth place. Now, that's not enough. I need to get better. And I feel like I was getting better. I knew what I had to do. I felt like a driver going back to his team of engineers, going over race footage and telemetry data and working with them to tune the assist just right. I did some further tweaking with the deacceleration cue look ahead offset. Now this is the most complicated name for an option ever, but what that actually does is look ahead on the track and the lower the number you set, the further ahead the deacceleration audio cue will see how fast you're going and give you plenty of time to brake or lift off the throttle. So you can go into the turn earlier at the right speed. I set it to around 40, which I felt would be enough for me to hear the audio cue, then hit the brake, and then for, wait for the cue to pop up again if I needed to deaccelerate more. I was now ready to go into that final race, and I was gonna win, dang it. I was gonna win. I could feel it. <laughs> 
When it was lights out, I focused solely on just my car. I didn't look at what place I was. I was fully immersed with the car and the blind drive assist. It took a little bit to get used to the look ahead and figure out the right balance and the right timing of it, but I think I was getting it. I was coming out of the turns faster and faster, giving me the perfect amount of acceleration to bypass all the cars around me. As they were just starting to hit the throttle, I was attaining top speed. I was hugging corners, still unaware of what my place in was. I knew I had cars ahead of me and needed to overtake them, but that's all I focused on. I stumbled a bit coming into some of the hairpin turns and going off track a little bit, but not enough to give me a penalty. Going into that second lap, I was in seventh and I was really starting to feel confident. I knew I was overtaking cars more and more and faster and faster. Before I knew it, I had three cars ahead of me. I knew one major mistake could send me back. Then into the last turn on the second lap, I turned a little too much and careened towards the wall. I did a quick rewind and went a bit wider into the turn, but lost all the momentum I was having to overtake. I felt like I kind of lost it, but when I was in the straightaway going into the final lap, I had just passed into podium position of third place. Now I could have stopped there and maintained that and just lightened up my grip and coasting from there so I could stay in that podium position of third, but I thought, nah. I got this. I could tell where I was. I knew what kind of acceleration I was having. I was gaining on second. I knew I could overtake them. I just needed the right moment. As fourth place was right on my tail, I made a careless move and went way to the left of the racing line and lost momentum going into the tight left turn. I was then back and forth. I then had to make a quick decision. I could ignore the braking audio cue going into that next last turn. If I just turned at the right time, I could be going at top speed going into that long term so that I could get out with full acceleration. This not only allowed me to overtake back into third, but I was now on the heels of second. And it worked. This not only allowed me to be able to get overtake and get back into third, but I was now on the heels of second. After some careful turns halfway through the lap, I finally passed second. The only thing standing in my way was the first place car, and I was gaining on them. Going into a very precarious hairpin, I could hear the braking audio cue, and I gently lift off the throttle, and as soon as I heard it stop, I was already throttling past the first place car. I was in first. First place, baby! The panic started to set in. Any mistake, and my race was gone. The car behind me was milliseconds away from overtaking me. Back and forth, they would gain on me. I'd pull away from them. Back and forth, we went. That second to last hairpin, I rode the right side of the track and turned as hard as I could to keep my momentum coming out of the turn. I could see the headlights of the car behind me bouncing off the back of my car, and I knew they were close. When I got to that final turn, I was tapping the brakes still hearing the braking cue I was panicking I kept tapping to lose speed so I didn't swerve off the track but as soon as I stopped I hit the throttle hard down the last straightaway the headlights were still behind me they were feet away from me feet I tell you I gripped the right trigger button and held it down as hard as I could giving it as high speed as I possibly could as soon as I got into third gear I knew I had it I did it! Yes! I won! P1, baby, was mine! Now, I gotta tell you, the thrill of that win was so cool. I went from a cacophony of noise from the very beginning in my first race, not knowing what any cues and what assists I should be using, I, to tuning it just right to win my first race. Woo! All right, where's the big champagne bottle? <laughs> now, this is just a preview of what blind drive assist can do. It's not perfect, and it has a major steep learning curve. I was told that there will be tutorial videos being made to help blind players learn how to use blind drive assist, which I think is needed because at the end of the day, I realized this game isn't an arcade racing game. This is Forza at its peak performance. The blind drive assist 
isn't an on-rails experience while simulating a Grand Prix. It's an assist that you can customize to fit your needs. If you need more help staying on track, increase the volume in the pitch to make that cue stand out. If you need help knowing when to break and how much, adjust that. This is full on customization, just like the real game where you can adjust the engines, the suspension, the, thr the throttle, the, uh, the brakes. I don't know cars. I'm just guessing at all these stuff, but Forza allows you to do that, and that's exactly what it feels like, tuning and feeling one with a car, and that's what you'll be doing with Blind Drive Assist. Once I figured that out, I realized how this feature can improve overall accessibility in the industry. This gives the player the power to adjust what fits their needs. It's further proof that accessibility isn't making the game easier for disabled players. It's giving us the same challenge as everyone else and the right tools to play and actually get better. I can see a future where if Turn 10 and Playground Games wanted to add a more simplified version of Blind Drive Assist into its Horizon series and a fully customizable version for its Motorsport series, this will truly be the best way for blind players to feel what it's like not only to drive a car in a Grand Prix, but winning one. Make sure to pick up Forza Motorsport when it comes out on October 10th on both Xbox and PC. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about Forza, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, I did it a little bit different than I normally do it. I kind of did a little bit commentary throughout the race, which I thought was pretty cool. If you liked it, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Also, hey, subscribe to be able to watch more videos. Thanks again. And as always, I remain obediently yours. Now, I'll see you on the track. Bye-bye.